Getting a glimpse inside the Pentagon's UFO office has been quite challenging, despite people thinking they're all of a sudden being transparent. Hey everybody, this is John Greenwell Jr. with TheBlackVault.com. At least now, we have a little bit of a glimpse. Not much, some of you will be let down, but there's actually some important uh, aspects of this story that I wanted to bring to you guys. Now, for those who watch the blackvault.com, you'll know that I did publish a written article about this. I'm sorry. I'm a little behind doing video updates. Uh, but for some of you, you may not have seen that article. So this is new to you. Let me go ahead and bring up the screen here, show you what I published. Uh, this is the article on the blackvault.com. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Just go to the blackvault.com or if you're watching on YouTube, check the description below. I'll link directly to it. Newly released document reveals index of UFO cases at the Pentagon's arrow. That is the all domain anomaly resolution office or arrow. That is their fancy name for the UFO investigation office. Now, obviously it's changing and all that, but when I filed this arrow was the name and uh, I'm sure it'll change probably 67 more times through the end of this year, all making it more difficult to follow and track all these acronyms. But regardless, this was a document that I went after to essentially get a listing of cases that were tagged unidentified aerial phenomena. To my surprise, they actually released something to me. But again, some of you may be let down because to some of you, this isn't useful, but there's still important aspects to it. A real quick refresher, there were 510 UAP reports as of 30 August 2022. That was per the newest UAP report that was published. Uh, the 2022 report came out in 2023, but whatever, uh, that won't add confusion, I'm sure. So only 510. The list that they released to me, and here it is in all its glory, just a bunch of numbers. There's 511 of them. And the cutoff date for data is December 6, 2022. Now, why do I want to point that out? Because they only added one case from 30 August 2022 to, again, December of the same year that was worthy of the tag of unidentified aerial phenomena. Not sure if that's encouraging, not sure if that's discouraging. I'll let you guys decide that one. But it's interesting, nonetheless, to see that there are additional cases being added to their database uh, and it is growing so it, it, they're still looking into us uh, into it and what's also I don't know maybe I'll maybe I'll try and be an optimist here what's also encouraging about it is they're not just adding a bunch of stuff in there saying hey look we're actually doing some something rather I'm hoping that there's a very intricate process for them to analyze it, brush over the case and see if it's essentially worthy enough to go into the database for storing and for, for subsequent investigation. Now, as I mentioned before, there's kind of um, a couple things here that may not really mean much to people and go, well, this is kind of useless. It's just a bunch of numbers, but here's where it's encouraging. Now we see the serial numbering system that they use. We see how they name the files and to anybody who utilizes the FOIA, what good is that? easy, you can FOIA that case number. Now, if I filed for every one of these 511 cases, uh, in number one, 511 different requests, they would do what's called aggregating that request into one, and likely say it's too broad, uh, just simply because there's just too many of them. Right before I published the article, I selected five cases at random. Uh, I think I did the, the lowest number I could find, the highest number that I can find, and three or so kind of in between just to kind of see what I come up with. That is not a overly burdensome request, so I shouldn't get that kicked back. So for those of you who want to take a stab at this, select some of those numbers. And I'm happy to even tell you what case numbers uh, that I requested. So let me know if you want to know that. That way we don't double up. And you guys can request other cases just to see what happens. Will they release it? Well, keep in mind, there's a video on this channel. I've written about it. It's a big obstacle to over overcome, but all of the visuals that are associated with these serial numbers are going to be classified. I'm still fighting it, but according to the DOD, everything is not releasable when it comes to photographs and videos, but there's still written material. That could mean a pilot testimony report. 
That could mean an investigation report. That could mean stuff they collected, but they didn't investigate it. Uh, especially with some of the older cases, it sounds like they're going back and 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 either archiving it or or um, you know potentially looking into uh, uh, cases of of decades old, and that's all great. So there's a lot of written material that may become very challenging for them in a legal sense to exempt it. So photos and videos, their argument is it's taken by sensitive and sometimes classified instrumentation. They don't want us to reveal our capabilities. But in the same regard, when it comes to written stuff, you don't have that excuse anymore. So now what's that excuse going to be? And well, they may have one and they'll try it and I'll appeal nonetheless. Uh, or we could be pleasantly surprised and there'll be a lot of unclassified or uh, declassified material that they feel that they do, do not have an exemption that they can fall back on. Interesting to note, list of all cases analyzed by being analyzed by or archived at the All Domain Anomaly Research Office. Just so you know, that is kind of the, ver the verbiage from my request. Uh, so we don't know how many of these are considered unidentified. We don't know how many of these are just for archival reasons and they didn't touch it in regards to an investigation or how many they've completed the analysis of. We can only go by the report itself. Obviously, I have that on the blackvault.com for you to download. So for all you FOIA requesters out there, let me know if you want those case numbers. We can all tackle this as a community effort and start going after some of these case numbers just to see where we end up. For others, don't be discouraged if you don't use the FOIA and you're looking at a bunch of numbers going, geez, John, uh, this was a complete waste of time. It's encouraging because we are starting to kind of pierce that veil of secrecy. And I've said it a million times and I'll say it a million times again, despite what people are telling you that they are being more transparent, that is not true. Uh, the path to disclosure that some people are claiming we are on is not true. That's provable. From a legal standpoint, all of this is heavily classified when it comes to the visual imagery. This allows us to pierce that secrecy a little bit, see the serial numbers, see the case numbers, and essentially go after that via the Freedom of Information Act. Where we end up, not sure, but we're all going to find out together as we tackle these case numbers and, and go for it. So again, 511 we can peruse. You can see the full list there. Again, go to theblackvault.com to download it for yourself. And let's work together and try and get as many uh, as we can, if any at all. That said, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. If you feel these videos are worthwhile, they are incredibly... Um, that's an incredibly helpful thing for me. doesn't cost you anything. Hit the thumbs up. If you don't like it, all right, hit the thumbs down, I guess. I don't aim for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And of course, turn the notifications on by clicking the bell. That makes uh, sure that you are aware every time I go live or one of these videos drops. That said, thanks so much for listening and watching. This is John Greenwald Jr. signing off, and we will see you next time.